there's always a big decision when it comes to choosing the right heater for your vehicle and you've seen me over the last few years go through the Mr. Buddy heater then to the Olympian Wave 3 and then when it comes to upgrading to a drier heat source the big question comes up for everybody do you do the cheap China knockoff one or do you actually buy a real one? You guys always hear me, you know, referring to it as the proper one. And that would be like the S-Bar or the Wabasto one here because it's got a long running track record. But everybody I hear running in the comments, they always say China, China, do the China one, do the China one. So today what I have for you guys here is I have both of them. There's the Wabasto one and the cheap China one, and I'm here at Ray Outfitted, and Rainer is about to kind of break all these things down, and we're gonna go through it piece by piece. Hi, I'm Rainer from Ray Outfitted. Today, we're gonna to take a look at a Wabasto and a Chinese parking heater. Uh, I'm an experienced automotive mechanic for over 15 years, and marine mechanic for about four, and we've been building camper vans for three years. So, let's take these apart and see what the differences are. So we're going to start with uh, pulling apart the Chinese one here. Uh, as you can see, uh, it says it is a diesel D2, which typically means a two kilowatt heater. Uh, down here for the temperature or heater power, it says it's between one and eight kilowatts. So I'm not sure if they use this housing for multiple units, but let's take it apart and see what's inside. So the first thing you notice is that uh, their air inlet cap is just screwed on uh, and that's what holds the top case on. Uh, now the control board here, you can see there is no weather seals on any of this and they actually have all their stuff exposed on it. Uh, and again, same on this side, you can see the, water, the wires are just soldered right into the circuit board here. And there's no casing preventing you from pulling on those wires when you're taking it all apart. So, there's the bottom case. Uh, there are isolators in here to prevent the exterior casing from touching the side so it doesn't melt for you. Other than that, they look fairly similar when you get them apart. So we'll take the Wabasto apart and compare the two once we have them apart. So here we have a Wabasto Airtop 2000. Uh, so it is a two kilowatt heater. Uh, we're gonna take it off and see what happens. So right away, a main difference that you can see is here is your control board and all of these uh, connectors will have weather seals on them. So I pull it out, you can see there's the weather seal on it. So if any moisture gets near here, it doesn't corrode any of the pins. Uh, it has the isolators right on it and they are rubber so they won't melt as well. Uh, looking at the two of them, uh, you can see side by side, the fins on the Chinese one are much smaller. Uh, they're much thinner and more brittle. Uh, the Wabasta ones are much thicker, uh, feel more rigid. And then when we flip them over to look at the exhaust ports, uh, you can see the ports are fairly similar. You have your intake ports on either, your exhaust ports. Uh, the Chinese ones are a little bit larger than the Webasto. Uh, and then you can also see the fuel lines here. So the Chinese fuel line is much larger in di inside diameter and the Webasto one is much smaller, uh, which makes me think that the Chinese one is gonna use about two to three times the amount of fuel. Next thing we're gonna compare is our two mufflers. We have the Chinese one here and the Wabasta one here. Uh, so right away, weight difference. The Wabasta one is much heavier. Uh, you can see the Wabasto is stamped as either airflow direction 
Uh, Chinese one has no stamping on it. Uh, just a little bit thinner steel on the two of them. You can see how thin the steel is here on the Chinese one. Uh, the Robasta one is actually fully welded all the way around. So this one may actually leak around here or around this side. Uh, but also when you look through, you can see straight through, there is a little bit of a pipe inside here. Uh, it doesn't feel like there's actually any uh, glass pack or anything inside there. So it may just be a straight through tube. I uh, can't see any holes uh, without putting a mirror inside it. But uh, if we actually to put a boroscope or something in there, you might see a bit more. Uh, the Webasta one here, uh, you can see, uh, you can't actually see right through it. So you can actually see inside there, it's a standard glass pack muffler. We flip it over, same thing, standard glass pack, but uh, it actually routes the air down through, forces it to actually be muffled. The Chinese one, uh, you can see straight through, and it doesn't, uh, you can see some glass fibers there, but it doesn't look very, uh, like it's gonna let a lot of air into the muffle. So the next thing we're going to look at is the two wiring harnesses. Uh, so the Chinese one has good connectors on it. Uh, can't fault them for anything there. Uh, you've got your power and ground wire, which you can see you're probably about a 14 gauge wire. And then you look at your Wabasta one here. Uh, there's your main connector. Uh, weather seal, uh, the Chinese ones do have weather seals on everything outside of the heater. Uh, for the Webasta one, you have your diagnostic and controller ports here, uh, your fuses, and then you have your two wires, your power and ground here. Again, about 14 gauge to carry the power through. Uh, there's your weather seal for the unit. Everything pretty standard there. For our controllers now, uh, we have the Webasto seven day timer and we have the Chinese one here. Uh, pretty standard controller. Uh, this one looks like it's got a settings wheel, power, your two directions and an okay for selecting. Then your Webasto, uh, your power and then everything else is controlled by the wheel depending on which direction and press in for okay. So now we're looking at the difference in the exhaust pipes. Uh, the Chinese one here, uh, you can see, came damaged right out of the box. Uh, you can also see how thin the wall of that exhaust pipe is. Uh, here is the Webasto one. Uh, it's nice and flexible. Uh, it's got a uh, cap on the end. This is to prevent any rodents from crawling up, apparently. Uh, luckily, we have never seen rodents climb up them. Uh, you can see the thickness of it. And when I do the same squish test, I'm actually doing twice as hard here. And you can see it's not actually moving. So uh, this pipe should last longer, uh, just all around better construction. So the last individual components we're gonna look at are the two mounting plates. Uh, so you can see here side by side, uh, there's a fair bit difference in the gauge of steel. Uh, with the Chinese one, uh, you can see how easy it is to bend and flex. Um, the problem with that is if you have anything underneath here when you try and bolt it down, uh, it will flex and you could let air up through. Uh, the other point is where the wires pass down through the floor. Uh, if you actually look at it in comparison to the bottom of the unit where it seals, the fact that you can actually see orange right there means that you actually have air gap between there and the inside. So if there is any combustion leak from the bottom of this, it can come up through into the passenger cabin. Where the Obasto and Espar mounting plates, if we compare them to the unit, even the fact that the wires come straight out of the intake here, when that goes, when that drops on, it seals perfectly around. You can't actually get any air passing up through here. And they even come with a nice little gasket to go on the bottom. Uh, just a better seal, more safe. Uh, this is why we recommend these ones over top of the Chinese ones. So now that we've got these units back together, let's see how they work and uh, do a little bit of a noise comparison between the two. 
So on this one here, this is the Webasto. Uh, we have our air intake, which pulls the air inside the burning chamber uh, as well as with the fuel. Uh, it does all of its ignition and burning to do the heat and then pushes all the exhaust back out. So the good thing is uh, with both units is the all the combustion air takes place outside. So that is good. Um, but what we have really noticed with these units is the Espar and Webasto are much quieter while they're running. We have had one of our clients ask us to install the Chinese heater. It's the only one we have installed. Uh, when we installed it, we were actually uh, close to Toronto Airport and we thought that it was a jet taking off and it was actually the heater turning on. So that is a significant noise difference. Uh, the Webasto unit also does come with a intake muffler. So this will make it near silent while running. I say near silent because it, you can never get the internal combustion to be dead silent. All in all, uh, there is a place in the market for both of these heaters. Uh, the Webasto, Espar, uh, and Plantair, they have been around for a long time. They are tested, true, uh, go through quality control testing. They are great heaters. They are a price point. The Chinese heaters, uh, they came out the day that the patent came up on these air heaters. Uh, we have not really seen them on the market for very long. They've been on the market for about a year and a half, two years. Uh, from what we've seen, they do have some issues with them. Uh, we know a lot of people have had fuel pumps fail uh, and they just all around just stop working on them. And this never happens when it's at the end of the season and it's like, okay, whatever, I'll fix it next year. It's usually the coldest day of the year that it stops working on you. So at the end of the day, take that into consideration uh, when you're looking at it. The Espar and Webastos, expensive, tried, tested, true. The Chinese ones, been on the market for about two years, no real longevity to them yet that we have seen in North America. So take that into consideration. Obviously when it comes to choosing the right heater for your van, there's a lot of things to factor in. And one thing here, looking at the size comparison of these two side by side, there is a huge difference between the Wabasta one and the cheap China one. And when you're in a van like my size, which is like a Ford E250, putting something that big in there takes up some valuable space. So this one here, I like it because it is smaller and a little bit more compact. But this is the one that I'm actually going to be putting in my van. The reason why I chose to spend the little extra to get the Wabasto is something inside of my stomach didn't feel right when it came to the cheap China one. So I've chosen to go with the gasoline uh, Wabasto one myself and this one's going to be tapped into the gasoline fuel tank in my van so I don't need an external tank. And that's another thing to think about. So a lot of people are putting these into their gasoline vans and then running an extra tank inside their van. Very seldom do you see people putting these in there and putting that diesel tank, I think it's a 10 liter tank, outside. Most people are just shoving them inside of a cabinet in their kitchen. And something to me, just <laughs> that just doesn't sound right. That's why I removed the 20 pound bomb out of my van that used to run my propane heater because, come on, it's my home. The last thing I wanna do is burn that thing down. So anyway, you guys, hopefully this kind of give you guys a little bit of a look on what's going on with both of these heaters and help you make a bit more of an educated decision. Like Rainer said, there's a price point, there's a reason for both of these to be in the market, but make the right choice for you. I just chose to go with the better one. When something's got 30 or 40, would you guys say this thing's been around since, Wabasso's well, been around since 1902? 1901. <laughs> which means companies like this have been around for a very long time. They're tried, true, and tested. And there's a reason why industries throw these in their mining trucks, in their transport trucks. And um, I actually have a subscriber of mine who works in the mining industry, and he says that they have these in all their big, giant, huge front end loaders that are out in the mines all day long. And he goes, behind his seat is one of these covered in probably this much dust, and it just works day after day after day. So think about that when it comes to choosing the right heater for your home. 
whether you're choosing the cheap China one or choosing an S-Bar, Wabasto, or is it Plant, plant Air? Or, or the Plant Air one. All right, you guys, hopefully this helped you guys a little bit. And uh, so now we're gonna be installing that one into my van. You guys can see that on another video. See you guys. Yeah.